Good morning. It's good to be with you today. Uh, greetings from your sister church in Fallbrook, California. We're glad to be here and, and worshiping with you today. What I want to share with you today in just a brief uh, 16 minutes is actually an introduction to something that the Loma Linda University Church is going to be sponsoring or hosting in October, a three-part seminar series on helping giving the community access to this type of information. So we're looking at this concept of goodbye diabetes, how to prevent or reverse diabetes the natural way. I, looking through the audience, I see individuals that I've worked with clinically uh, up to 25 years ago. It's good to see you here. Um, the, the seminar series that will be hosted at the main university sanctuary the weekend of October 19 and 20. So you'll be uh, looking for more information on the times. And again, this is a free uh, workshop and series for anybody in the community. Um, and it's based on this book who uh, was uh, published by Heart Research and Dan Houghton is with us today as well as co-authored by the very bright and talented Elise Harbolt, who's an RN right here at Loma Linda University. So, um, does God care about our physical health? I, I would say that coming from a, a university that has the model to make man whole, we understand the words of the Apostle John echoing God's desire that, that I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. God really wants us to be healthy and he wants us to take advantage of the second, this, his second book, the book of nature, the, the evidence in science on how we can optimally improve our body's health. Now, I love this statement from Isaiah 58 where where. Isaiah is prophesying that, that someday you, we, if we choose to participate in this, in this uh, challenge, that you, we shall be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of the paths to dwell in. I'll admit that when I first read these years ago, I had no idea what that meant. But now, as, we're, as, as we understand the latest information from the Human Genome Project that, that was completed 10 years ago, we're now starting to understand that through lifestyle medicine strategies, we can actually do genetic bypasses around the many gene mutations that we carry. Almost 70% of us carry the genes for diabetes. But having the gene for diabetes doesn't mean that we have to ultimately succumb to that. And if we do have diabetes, doesn't mean that we have to just accept the fact that we're going to have this for the rest of our lives. This is exciting information. I want to be one of those individuals that is a repairer of the breach, not just fixing the superficial part of the problem, but actually cutting to the core, even understanding the metabolic pathways that are driven by the genes that can actually be altered in their expression by the right action of our choices. So um, let's, let's jump into defining diabetes. Essentially, it's simply put, it's a, having a blood sugar level so high and high for so long that eventually it will cause significant complications if not corrected. And now see, this is the actual definition. In other words, diabetes is only defined by how high the blood sugars are. But I'd like to suggest to us that simply controlling our blood sugars, no matter how we do it, simply controlling our blood sugars does not solve the problem of diabetes. Diabetes is the tip of the iceberg that represents a metabolic mess, a metabolic dysfunction that is driving that unless we fix that, the, the metabolic problems associated with those mutated genes, et cetera, are not going to be fixed. So we need to get to the core of the issue. There is literally a die epidemic. In 1980, there was only 2.5% of Americans who had diabetes. Fast forward 30 years, we're looking at 8.3% of Americans with diabetes, another 35 to 40% of adults with pre-diabetes, 90% or more of them who don't know they have pre-diabetes, and that's not even the beginning of the problem. 
there's many problems that come before even pre-diabetes. And so the, another challenge here is that a full third of people who right now have diabetes have no idea they have it, even though they've had a physical in the last year and their fasting blood sugars were seen to be normal. Dr. Kawi in a major NIH grant found that unless blood sugars are checked after meals, unless blood sugars are checked after a sugar drink, you're missing a full 35% of people who already have diabetes. So we need to pay attention to earlier detection. We need to understand that it's actually 13% of Americans have diabetes. And that means that not 26 million, but 40 million of us have diabetes. And another 80 plus million have prediabetes. Again, most not understand. In other words, about one out of two of us adults at least have prediabetes. This is a diabetic. That, that we're losing the war on unless we address the core of the prob uh, problem, unless we take that challenge of Isaiah and say, we really want to focus on making man whole and address the, the, the repair of the breach and restore these metabolic pathways. And we now have the science on how to do that appropriately. The problem, challenge is huge. Uh, uh, leading causes of heart attacks and strokes and amputations and kidney dialysis, kidney failure, uh, retinopathy, and blindness, and so forth. The, the, the uh, polymyopathies or po polyopathies, rather, of associated with diabetes are huge. A and these are entirely preventable if the problem is addressed at the core. And so uh, we need to start paying attention to warning signs. You know, the Apostle Paul told us, I would have known I had problems if I hadn't, what? If I hadn't looked at the law, if I hadn't studied the scriptures. Likewise, if we don't study the latest scientific evidence, we're not aware of, of the problem that is already not just germinating within us, but is actually growing uh, and damaging our bodies without our knowledge. So we want to pay attention to the warning signs. The other issue is that most of us who, who were trained in earlier years, and, and even still today, there's this mindset that really, once a diabetic, always a diabetic. And that mindset is real. Why? Because that's our experience. That's what we see. That we, we, most people don't see many people reversing their diabetes, but that's because we're not necessarily addressing the underlying issues. Now, I'm not saying everybody can reverse their diabetes. I'm saying that most people, given a proper approach, have the potential to do that. That's the new paradigm in lifestyle medicine. And so, so uh, the challenge for us is starting to give the community hope rather than saying, just deal with it, that's the way it is giving some hope that we can actually repair the breach, we can restore the paths. Um, so uh, the beginning of that hope comes from a new understanding from genetics. It used to be that we always would call these genetic risk factors or non-modifiable risk factors. That's not true anymore. It never was true, but we thought it was true. Genetic, genetics does not determine our health. It is a template that allows certain things to happen under the right circumstances, or in this case, under the wrong circumstances. And so what we want to do is take advantage of this new genomic research and recognize that we can do a lifestyle, nutrigenomic bypass of that gene once we understand that. The age of personalized medicine is upon us, and we can actually do tests to find out where we need to do that nutritional bypass. So uh, a, a great way to understand this is a story, it's actually a research study done by Dr. Randy Jurdle at Duke University, who's the director of the genomic lab at Duke, and he's, he took a group, a group of agouti mice. These are mice that have a genetic defect, mutations, that cause them to have yellow coats. They become overweight and obese very quickly, develop diabetes, heart disease, and many of them die of cancer early. And so these, these, um, these agouti fat yellow mice, he took them and he de-randomized them into two groups. One group he gave super nutrients during the fat yellow mama mouse's pregnancy. And, and within the first generation, these mice, instead of being born yellow and becoming, and becoming chronically ill early on, came out brown-coated, lean, never developed diabetes, heart disease, or cancer, 
and they found that they were genetically identical to the other mice. Identical in every way, and so this was the beginning of the, the science of epigenetics. That is, epigenetics is far more important than your actual genetics. You can actually measure epigenetics in a laboratory. You can actually see how your genes are turned on or turned off. Think of it like a dimmer switch. The choices that we make, what we think, what we do, what we say, what we eat, what we drink, everything in our lifestyle and our environment actually uh, inputs into that dimmer switch and it allows us either to turn down that dimmer switch on that diabetic gene or whatever gene you're talking about or turn it back up. In other words, we literally, like, like, like God in heaven telling Cain that one day in Genesis 4, says you must learn to master this. We now know that we have the opportunity to master even our genome by paying attention to these principles. And so uh, in the seminar series, we'll expand, expand on this, this, this concept from the scriptures unto the third and fourth generations. It's called genetic drift, epigenetic drift, which we'll address in full detail during the seminar. But what, what about detecting diabetes? We'll be talking about the expanded model for catching this early, right? If you wanna reverse something, you want to catch it as early as possible in order to reverse it. You want to find out what your true risk factors are. What, what made me so passionate about this, when I was 10 years old, my, my parents were missionaries in South America. My dad drove home one day, and my brother and I were playing baseball. And, and we saw him drive in. He says, that's strange. He doesn't usually show up till really late at night. And, and a, as I looked at him, he was crying. And we immediately started crying because we'd never seen our father cry before. We knew something was horribly wrong. And he says, says, he said, John, Wesley, we need to pack and leave in 20 minutes. We gotta get on the plane, go to New York City. Uncle Russell, who's a physiatrist, Russell Youngberg, uh, was picking us up in New York City and rushing us to a hospital near Reading, Pennsylvania that was, had a surgery team awaiting to deal with my mother's very, very serious illness. And we never went back to, uh, to Bolivia as children. Uh, we just left everything and went. Two years later, I'm raking leaves with my father in, in uh, Barron Springs, Michigan, one autumn day. And I asked, Dad, why did this have to happen to Mom? What happened? How, how could she have died at age 39? I remember her so vibrant and healthy. And he, I remember him looking at Looking, uh, leaning on his rake and looking down Greenfield Drive, just one mile from Andrews University, looking at the autumn leaves changing, didn't say a word. I remember saying to him, said, Dad, I wish I knew right now what I can do to prevent this from happening to me, what I can do to reverse whatever is germinating within me that's leading to uh, whatever I'm at risk for. I wish I knew that now. And without realizing it, that ushered in. That, well, that was the watershed moment for me to give me this passion for lifestyle medicine, for this model that we have here at Loma Linda University to make man whole, to not cut any corners, to be true repairers of the breach. And so we need to start paying attention to the diagnostic criteria early, okay? And not just, not just wait till something is fully diagnosable, but start dealing with them at the metabolic and even the genetic level. We have access to that now. Uh, so, but the other thing is understanding here that that diabetes and pre-diabetes is actually stage three high blood sugar. There's already two, high, two levels of high blood sugar that come even before pre-diabetes. And, and even, even before that, we have problems, metabolic problems with insulin production, which is really what drives the metabolic mess. We'll be discussing all of that in our October series. Uh, so so the, the, all this would be worthless if we did not have if we did not have a template, an opportunity to address this challenge of defeating diabetes, preventing and reversing as far as possible these conditions. So once again, we through the Human Genomic Project now, we actually can find out where are the breaches? Where are the things that are uniquely driving somebody to have problems? And start addressing, with, uh, addressing them specifically for individuals, because I want to be a restorer of the breach, uh, a restorer of the past, a repairer of the breach. Norman Cousins, sum, to summarize, Norman Cousins, 25 years ago, not more than, not more than uh, 
a hundred yards from this very building, uh, spoke and, and, and to, to an audience that gave him a standing ovation, and he ended with this statement. He says, he says, don't deny the diagnosis. That gets you nowhere. But defy the verdict. In other words, the verdict oftentimes is what destroys hope. The diagnosis doesn't destroy hope. The diagnosis gives us the opportunity to become healthier than we ever were before. It's often said that the best way to be healthy is get diagnosed with a chronic disease and manage it well. Okay? And so that's, that's literally true. And so, um, so once again, in summary, God wishes for us above all things that we would prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. And so uh, I'd like to once again uh, challenge you as ambassadors of the health message that we have to, to invite your friends and your neighbors and your colleagues to this seminar series sponsored by Loma Linda University Church uh, in October, on Saturday and Sunday, the 19th and 20th. And you'll be hearing more information about when that's going to happen. But it's an opportunity for each of us to fulfill that promise that you shall be called repairs of the breach and restorers of the paths to dwell in. Let's pray. Father, we are, we are grateful that you have entrusted to us such a wonderful message of hope. And I just pray, Lord, that, that you impress upon us the opportunity that we have to not just take advantage of that ourselves, but more importantly, to model that and to share that with the world so that they can better appreciate and fully accept you as their Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.